Welcome back, Red Ruby here with some more Dawn of War 2 Elite Mod action for you tonight. I've got a monthly Rumble Tournament number 26 match here for you. I know that's a mouthful, but it's a semis finals match between Farzo and Angrathul, the Warlock and Chaos Lord players. If you're looking for some more of this tournament, I uploaded all of the live streamed games onto the channel in its own special little playlist so if you weren't there you can kind of live vicariously through that playlist but anyways that was then this is now i won't tell you who won that tournament so you'll have to go find that out for yourself and i wouldn't want to spoil anything in this game one way or another either anyways we've got double dire avengers we got banshees coming out onto the field we've got two squads of chaos heretics and space marines as well uh no one really going hard for the left side the west side of the map normally gets a little more attention but all it stands over here right now is a squad of dire avengers chaos lord moving into the center of the map with some heretics and these chaos space marines looking for a bit of trouble and they're going to find it over on the east side warlock probably going to have to pull off at that point I, oh man he already loses the dire avenger not quite the way he wants to do it there is there are garrisons back here a lot of people tend to forget that these garrisons exist but they're very useful as we're seeing right here but uh, ultimately, that's going to work for either side because those Chaos Space Marines can, of course, hop on in and hide away from that Warlock as well. Meanwhile, it looks like the Heretics and the Chaos Lord found themselves some Banshees to get in with. Uh, this, the, the Banshees, of course, fighting against the Chaos Lord, going to have to be very careful of that Kill the Weak ability. Banshees after these Heretics against the one squad, they should be able to win pretty handily. That second squad, though, could be a bit more than they want to mess with. There are tons of heretics in here. Now Doomblast going off left and right. One squad looking very low. Kind of hard to click on the specific squad you want to when there's two of them in here. Uh, lots of Banshees going down. Down to just two models. Maybe even one if a couple more swings go down. Perilously low the Chaos Lord. Fortunately for that last Howling Banshee, not able to get that final swing and send the squad into Oblivion Warlock getting a decap on that natural wreck point. However, battle equipment activated down here takes out one of those Chaos Space Marine models and hops on back into the garrison. Nice little maneuver there, trying to split some micro, catch him off guard. The grenade went down, but uh, he threw it at the doorway, so you're kind of doomed when that particular play goes down and you're trying to get out from under that. Noise Marines coming onto the field now as well. It's going to put a lot of potential threat on Angrathul's power farm, but so far we have we don't even see any gems down. Uh, not only a single one for our Chaos player as well, which is curious because I feel like, oh, there we go. I was about to say, Angrathul isn't really purchasing anything major at this stage in the game. He's got no upgrades on his squads, but he got that Guardian Weapons team out, uh, and then the Noise Marines, I guess so long as they avoid those Banshees, it's going to be really difficult to deal with these. The Chaos Lord should be rolling up with them, I would expect, to try to hit that gen farm. Uh, so long as he can flank that Guardian Weapons team, he'll be good to go. As it stands right now, still just now a generator going down. Normally Eldar build a generator right away. It was kind of odd to see that so late. Perhaps he was just microing around a bit too much and kind of forgot to throw that down. Nice looking Destructor going down on those Heretics, taking a big chunk of HP off. And they have to retreat as soon as that Warlock does his flying battle leap, Hidden Dragon style, into that pile of heretics. No real uh, exchange between the VPs. The VPs kind of just been going back and forth a little bit here. 437 to 480. Shuriken is in position to stop that Noise Marine advance. He's not going to have to worry too much about that Gen Farm as it stands right now. Aspect of Strength coming off on the Banshees who are screaming in after those tricky noise marines noise marines can be such a nuisance when they're utilized well but they were kind of out there unsupported i think maybe he should have stressed going a little deeper in on this gen farm but there was only one gen here it wouldn't have paid off that much uh and Grathul correctly did not throw down those other two generators till he was sure he routed those noise marines dark halo coming down on the chaos lord he's gonna make him even tankier even more of a bully than he already was uh, I feel like I'd rather see the Combi Flamer here than the Dark Halo. The Combi Flamer really makes it difficult for the Dire Avengers to kind of kite around a lot more. And the Dark Halo, is as great as it is as an energy shield, it always makes it so it's very difficult to pull off any solid kill the weeks, which of course gets you some heals, gets you some knockback, gets all that fun stuff. Dire Avengers still battling away over here while the Banshees try to keep those Noise Marines at bay. 
One generator went down. The spot of Heretic's gonna get suppressed with the dire. Or oh, I thought that was going to be the aspiring champion coming in, but it is not. They were just trying to reinforce and ran out of base a bit too early. Banshees went a bit too deep, and a flank came in from the rear side there. The Chaos Lord and aspiring champion Heretic forcing off that squad pretty easily. A second Guardian Weapons team coming in now, so I, I think that's probably pretty reasonable. Especially come tier two, you might want a Bright Lance to help you with a Blood Pressure or Dreadnought as it comes in. And uh, the other still very useful to have that Guardian Weapons team shuriken out as well because you've got two squads of Heretics. And uh, it helps really pepper down the Chaos Lord as well, more than one might expect trying to keep him under control. Heretics looking for a flank, didn't quite find it. The second weapons team did spin around nice and quickly to open fire, but the Chaos Lord's ignoring the Warlock now and heading on in there. Uh, meanwhile, we have Noise Breeds over here boarding some Dire Avengers who are attempting to defend the gen farm and uh, did not quite manage to do so. It looks like that's gonna go down completely as both squads of Guardian Weapon teams are over here. Both these Shuriken Cannons gonna try to do something against this Chaos Lord. Banshee's now moving in. Uh, only one generator, it looks like, will go down here along with the power node itself, but uh, still nothing to... Oh, I was about to say, nothing too bad happened there just as that Guardian Weapons team was about to go down, but it did not, so all is well. Farzo heading into Tier 2, and Grithul is a good deal behind. It could be dangerous if that early Blood Crusher hits the field. There's going to be a definite period of time where that thing is going to reign supreme. Heretics and Guardians tangling a little bit. Chaos Lord taking a face full of shuriken fire, but does manage to get the weapon engaged. The Guardians back here should be enough to scare it off. Uh, but Heretics get pushed back on both sides of the map. And so far, the Warlock's been doing a pretty okay job of keeping the resources under control. He's starting to fall behind a little bit in victory points with the 2-0 cap here. He just did push off. Uh, both Chaos squads on either side there, so he will be able to get those back in his control. But uh, all things considered, the map is largely blue. The center uh, contested points here, both the power requisition and this far power on the right, are all in control of the Eldar player. The only thing that is in the Chaos hands as far as contested points was that requisition point, which hadn't really matured, so he hadn't held it for very long yeah, anyway. Uh, we can see, just looking at the resource tab right now, 306 to 251 in favor of the Chaos, but the uh, Eldar do have a larger top cap by just a bit right now, but more squads on the field as a whole. These heretics playing a dangerous game. They're staying there way too long. They drop one last Doom Blast, and I guess that was actually just long enough because that Doom Blast combined with a volley from that Noise Marine squad uh, just about melted those Banshees down to nothing. Went to half HP in the blink of an eye and lost a quick model Blood Crusher coming onto the field while Angra Fool just now hits tier two. And the Chaos Lord looks like he's going for another gen bash on this side of the map. Just as Angrathul unknowingly buys himself another generator. He should have even seen these noise marines coming in walking past that power node right there and uh, maybe thought twice about that. But uh, looks like at least having the shuriken up for the time being will be enough to halt or at least delay the current advance of Chaos. 423 to 330. And, and Grithul, let's see, what is he going to do to deal with this Blood Crusher? He can, of course, get a Bright Lance right quick. Uh, the Banshees, once they get their XR, can be kind of a soft counter, but almost always that Blood Crusher seems to take out that XR. So it's a big gamble trying to deal with the Blood Crusher with Banshees alone. So he's going to need at least the XR and the, the Bright Lance, I feel like. As far as getting some Tier 2 stuff on the field, he doesn't have a lot of requisition, has enough power to maybe get himself... I guess once it kind of all lines up, so long as he doesn't lose any more models, he will be able to get a Falcon on the field, and I love seeing Falcon. Wraith Lord isn't ever a bad choice, but he's pretty far off from that with his blood pressure breathing down his neck, and Noise Marines getting ready to push in here shortly and demolish the rest of that power. Warlock tangling over here on his own. I think he could have stayed in again. I don't know. 100 HP, I guess, might have been a little brazen against those folks. Those, uh nasty chaos space marines actually do a reasonable amount of damage in melee dire avengers finding themselves stranded out here against chaos lord and all his heretics a lot happening across the map right now we have the gen farm engagement we have these guardians and then on the far side we have 
Chaos Space Marines running around as well. Grenade doesn't quite go down. Two Dire Avengers escape from that engagement as opposed to six of the Chaos Heretics. Lots of Eldar over here. Brightlands is on the field, so that's at least something to threaten that blood pressure. Of course, it's fairly easy, easily engaged by the Chaos Lord himself. But even the Scorch Cannon on that Brightlands can make the Chaos Lord a lot easier to burn down so long as he can get a few hits, get that increased damage output on that big beefy hero. What do you Warlock finally pushes off these pesky Chaos Space Marines. Man, these guys were in it to win it over here. Blood Letters and a Falcon coming onto the field. Uh, the Falcon, I think... I think the Falcon right now is gonna is gonna be pretty excellent. Uh, it, it does enough anti-vehicle damage to threaten that blood pressure. Not to mention the Bright Lance that's already out here can really control probably this whole center area of the map here if he chooses to set it up as such. Grabs himself a couple generators. Blood letters coming in on that uh, Bright Lance though. Very very dangerous. High DPS demons with those flaming swords there. Managed to route the entirety of this little Eldar detachment on this side of the map. And as it stands right now, look at that Bright Lance with its derpy nose. Oh, it straightened it out. I guess I was going to say it had a broken nose, but it does not. Just looking looking a little to the side there. Falcon moving in, trying to prepare, I guess, for this inevitable gen bash that he knows is coming. Those noise marines haven't been upgraded to Blast Master, so he knows he's hunting for generators. But of course, as I say that, he just drives that thing right on away. I guess he wants, to, it's really the only weapon he, mobile weapon he has against the blood pressure, so he kind of wants to get something in on that. That said, the Falcon's kind of in close quarters. He has to be very careful when approaching that blood pressure because it can still do a lot of damage to the Falcon. And now the uh, Warlock just picking off some squad, squad models there. And two gens and a node go down against the Noise Marines and Blood Letters. Bright Lance and Noise Marines trying to get in on these Banshees. You have to be very careful. This could go either way with the Chaos Lord moving in, knocking those Banshees over and the... Uh, Ludlayer's doing a lot of trouble on his side of the map. Oh my gosh, the Falcon just went down. Oh my, that's, I guess he was so focused on this engagement, he kind of lost track of that Falcon, lost it to the Blood Crusher, I'm assuming, over there. We don't have it on screen, but I'm sure we'll be able to find it for you later. Ludlayer's under a bit of duress here, but of course a little bit of worship can fix them right up. Down to three models, but this gen farm is in a lot of trouble, especially now that Engrathul doesn't have that Falcon out here to keep some pressure on this squad. If it wasn't for that, oh my gosh, if that Falcon hadn't gone down, this would be a completely different game right now, but suddenly it's looking very much in favor of the Chaos. The letters teleport out, Chaos Lord staying on the field to maybe try to force off this Warlock, maybe send him back to base so he can't just run around and cap in the meantime. That's probably all he can get going right now, though. If he turned off that shield, he would have been able to get a kill the weak up and probably save himself from these Banshees. Swift movement may get activated here, and I think that would spell certain doom for the Chaos Lord. The Blood Crusher could charge in here and stop them from finishing him off. Oh my gosh, but the Banshee gets one last swing in before getting knocked over by that charge. Blood Crusher out here uh, uh, might be a bit dangerous. He's not sure where that uh, where that Bright Lance is. If the Bright Lance had been over here, that Blood Crusher might be in a pretty pretty perilous spot. Another Falcon coming onto the field with Farzo going into Tier 3. More often than not, I feel like recently we've seen Chaos just hang out in Tier 2 as they do have so many great options. He could just get himself a Dreadnought or keep, keep the Blood Letters coming. Uh, but as it stands right now, going into Tier 3, not sure if that's the best move, considering he could probably get another squad here and really push his advantage. 264 to 366, about a 100-point victory advantage to Farzo right now. And Grathul still has plenty of time to get back in this. Uh, he hadn't been bleeding very much, so he was just able to repurchase that Falcon right away. But yet again, he's got it just sitting next to this Blood Crusher. Needs to be a lot more aware of his vehicle micro. Those things are a big investment, and if he loses another one at this stage of the game, it's going to be just about all over. Banshees tearing through these Chaos Space Marines. The squad might even go down. Oh my gosh, these Banshees really putting in work these past couple engagements. Taking out the Chaos Lord, now taking out the Chaos Space Marines and engaging this Blood Crusher. Is the Blood Crusher going to go down as well? No, thank goodness for Farzo. He was paying attention and got that thing out of there. Blood Letters, uh, Blood Letters can't deal with this either right now. Getting knocked back. 
the heel goes down, but not quite early enough at all. And now Banshee is being supported by this Falcon. The Pass Lord isn't going to be able to do anything about this. These Banshees just... Man, they were mad about that Falcon going down, and they came back out with a vengeance. They were... They were certainly upset about that. And suddenly... Oh my gosh, Far look at the look at the unit board. Farzer's down to just heretics left. He lost his blood letters. He lost the noise marine. Uh, he lost everything. He's getting some blood letters back, but I, I don't know how he's gonna squeeze back into this game. There's level four. Oh my gosh, level four dire avengers, level four howling banshees, bright lance out here, falcon level two. So much experience went down in that last engagement that everything is just at full bore now. Warlock is upgraded, unupgraded. So is the Chaos Lord. Surprised to not see much war gear this game, other than that that uh, shield that we saw in the Chaos Lord earlier. Victory points changing hands now. Eldar obviously going to close the gap at this stage in the game because uh, what is this Chaos going to do? He's got a couple weak melee squads. I mean, the the Chaos Heretics with the Aspiring Champion can do a little bit, but against level four Banshees, nothing is really going to stand up to that. These blood letters coming out at level one are going to get ripped apart as well. I'm not sure how he plans to take apart this Eldar formation. He is in tier three. He does have enough red for some excellent global calldowns. We haven't seen the uh, blood sacrifice spam that we normally see from a Chaos Lord, so he could open an Imperial Abyss or, uh, or I, I don't know, he, any number of things at this point. A good use of uh, Bloodlust or anything like that could really turn a couple engagements to his favor. He's not doing terribly, but suddenly the VPs are even up and a triple cap against Farzo. Let's take a we look at his... So he could get a Predator at this point. He is doing not too bad on Requisition. Obviously, losing all that army kind of gave him a little catch-up time on that. You lost everything so much that I guess the upside is that you didn't have to reinforce any of it. Uh, Blood Crusher getting a bit brazen right now. Might, might Yeah, he wants to pull that back definitely. He could get caught on the run. There's three potential anti-vehicle threats in the form of the weapons team, the Falcon, and these level four Howling Banshees are even going to rip through that probably at this point. So, yeah, we are seeing a Chaos Predator. Andro Fool sitting on tons of requisition, but very little power. Probably wants to throw down at least a generator or two at this stage. Because all of his... I mean, he's got he's got a pretty reasonable army right now. Especially considering what's out here. I think so long as he just kind of sits down, locks what he has. Even this Predator is potentially not that big a threat. So long as this Bright Lance stays on the field. And he has Banshees and the Warlock to very easily scare off those bloodletters. So there it goes. The Falcon under fire from that Chaos Predator. He knows it's out there now. A couple quick shots takes it down to half health. Where is that Bright Lance? That Bright Lance is getting set up right in this corner. Banshee's moving in as well. Bloodletters responding to the setup team. The Hero Slash whiffing completely, unfortunately. But uh, even so, there's still just a lot of fire down on the field right now. Level 4 Dire Avengers put out a, some pretty big hurt as they're fully upgraded. Grenade going down, putting a little bit of hurt on that Blood Crusher sitting at level 2. Imperial Abyss gets opened up right in the middle of everything. The Falcon has no choice but to back into the firing arc of that Chaos Predator. Rear armor exposed and everything. One more shot and that could be all she wrote. The Falcon goes down. The Bright Lance is setting up in the wrong direction. But that, that Chaos Predator's putting out a lot of hurt. Bright Lance turns and gets him, gets a couple shots down just as that Chaos Predator moves out of position. And suddenly it looks like Farzo's back in the game. This this game's been going back and forth now a couple times. It was looking just earlier like Andrew Fool had really no recourse. Ooh, Ethereal Slash doing a little hurt on that Chaos Predator. It was getting a little brazen saying, ah, I'm not afraid of a Warlock. And then he shattered the earth beneath that tank and they were like, ooh, uh, we're just going to go ahead and... Head back to base, I think. That guy's a little tougher than we thought. All right, so Farzo, I mean, so he's lost two Falcons. That's pretty huge. But he's got, he's got, he's got tough squads on the field. He's just hurting on power. If he would have dropped, oh man, he's just now dropping these generators. If he would have dropped those generators before that engagement, he'd have enough power right now to get something onto the field. But as it stands right now, he's just sitting on loads of requisition with no power to really invest. He could easily have dropped all three of those generators a while back. So let's see. Guardian Weapons team getting set up again, at least kind of 
forcing the Chaos Predator to move a little bit. Oh my gosh. Ethereal Slash goes down, beats up, takes a nice chunk off of those uh, Bloodletters, but not before they manage to take out one of the Dire Avenger squads. Things are looking uh, uh, suddenly a bit dicey for Andrathul. I thought this was pretty much in the bag for him if you would have asked me five minutes ago. But now everything is looking really, really dastardly from that Chaos Lord. Honestly, that, that Imperial Abyss was so perfectly placed. I didn't even get to talk about that, but that's exactly what you want to do. Some a lot, a lot of people just throw the nuke down on the army, and then if they hit the mass retreat, they kind of just throw 500 red away, but he did it in such a way that he, he forced the Falcon in a position where it had to retreat through the Imperial Abyss or back away from it and be stuck next to that Chaos Predator. So that, that was such perfect positioning. And it split the rest of the army off. Oh, it was, it, was, it was a nice abyss. Definitely turned the game completely around. And I think it caught Angathul pretty much entirely off guard. The aspiring champion looks like it will be able to spot this webway gate. Oh my, there goes the blood crusher. But oh, Chaos Terminator's on the field as well. Suddenly I was asking before, if maybe going tier three was the right choice, and uh, it may not have been at that exact moment, but now we're seeing, oh, this is madness right now. Ethereal Slash, Fire Dragon's putting pressure on the Chaos Predator, but those Terminators are, are just going to be a stalwart ranged platform now. What's going to turn them away at this point in the game? There's very little on the field. Both Dire Avenger squads have gone down. The Fire Dragons can put some hurt on it, but suddenly Engra pulls down the two squads. 95 to 247. Uh, we do see an Autark drop coming in, but the Predator is not hanging around for that. Doesn't manage to hit the Predator or that retreating squad of Chaos Heretics. Barzo running perilously low on victory points. Down to under 100. I'm surprised he didn't try to finish those Banshees off a little bit harder, but he needs to get these victory points under control. I don't know what Angrathul is going to do about this now that the victory points have changed hand. Oh, he throws in the towel, looks like. GG, well played. And that's going to be the game. Wow, I thought that maybe he had stuck around a little bit longer. There were only 73 points on the on the scoreboard. But uh, I guess all things considered, what did he have left? He had a, a, a Bright Lance, Banshees, and an Autark against an entire Chaos Complement at this point. That Predator wasn't going to go down very easily against just about anything. Uh, Bloodlet, yeah, I guess I guess that's fair to throw in the towel. I was just kind of surprised because I thought the game was his. Whew! Well, what what an end! And and props to Farzo for holding it together and bringing that back. It's I feel like some folks may have thrown in the towel at that stage in the game once you're sitting there in your base with just a squad of heretics and a chaos lord left. I guess he had the blood crusher too, but at the time there was a falcon, a bright lance. It was looking rough, but uh, then suddenly a, a Chaos Predator and these big bad sons of guns right here. Oh my gosh, look look how big those guns are. That's just silly. Everything's silly in Dawn of War and 40k as a whole. Anyways, if you enjoyed that match, be sure to check out the rest of the tournament matches. MRT number 26 completely available on the channel now. Go enjoy the live stream. It was Atlas and Mr. Boogie actually helped me out with that cast, so props to them. And of course, props to Atlas in general for always keeping those monthly Rumble events going. But that's it for me. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I love hearing from you folks. This is Red Rupee. I'll catch you guys next time.